positive assessments. Why should you use formative assessments in your practice? As a teacher, it is your responsibility to find out if your students do not understand what is being taught. Students are going to have misconceptions. Students will become lost at times. Poor teachers continue to teach whether or not their students understand. However, teachers need to know if their students don't understand what's being taught. Otherwise, you're gonna wind up with a class full of confused students that haven't learned anything. So master teachers use formative assessments to make decisions to reteach or move forward. So use formative assessments to change a teaching method, to assign extra homework, or even move forward onto the next topic. When should you use formative assessments? Well, it should be used continuously throughout the lesson. It should be integrated with your instruction to the point where you teach, then assess, teach, then assess, teach, assess, teach, assess, etc., and so forth. So make it comfortable for your students to respond to questions. Formative assessment should take place firmly during the teaching process. Here are some examples. First up, hand signal one to five. One to five is a whole class assessment. So a teacher may be working a problem on the board, let's say. At some point, that teacher will want to stop. Then they will formatively assess their students by having them rate their understanding on a scale from one to five using their fingers. One finger is the lowest level of understanding. Students will put up one finger if they are absolutely lost. Two fingers indicate the student has a vague understanding. Three fingers indicate the student is in the middle. Four fingers means the student has a good understanding. And five fingers is the highest level of understanding. Five fingers means the student has mastery. Ultimately, one to five is the quickest way to assess a large group of students. Number two, brainstorming. Brainstorming usually takes place before introducing a new topic. Teachers use brainstorming to get an idea of what their students already know about a topic. Ask some examples of predator-prey relationships. Then list the examples on the board. The good part is students will also learn examples of predator and prey as you brainstorm. Brainstorming is a great assessment for gauging a class's prior knowledge on a topic. Third, exit tickets. Used mainly at the end of a lesson, hence the word exit. The teacher will ask an essential question question that revolves around a big concept of the lesson. Formative assessments are always meant to be quick. Give students about two or three minutes only. Students are given a small slip of paper. The question is answered on the slip of paper. You can use exit tickets to track implementation of standards throughout the course. Exit tickets are best used for assessing a lesson's overall objective or goal. Fourth, think, pair, share. A three-part assessment. Step one is think. The first thing you do is assign your class a question to think about and work on. Be sure to give students appropriate wait time for the question. Step two is pair. Pair your students with the classmate. It's probably best that the teacher chooses the partners. Working together, this assignment helps to promote 21st century life skills, 
And don't forget to allow students to compare their thoughts and answers. Last part, share. Now your student is called upon to share their thoughts on the question with the rest of the classroom. The teacher will make corrections on the student's responses for all to hear. This assessment is also an excellent classroom activity. Now our last example, individual whiteboards. To perform this assessment, teachers must provide each student with an individual whiteboard. Distribute an individual whiteboard to each student. Then ask the student questions such as, what is the square root of 144? The student will respond by writing their response to the question on the whiteboard using a dry erase marker. Now the teacher will individually assess each student's response and more importantly, the teacher can give appropriate corrections to any mistakes made. The student can both see the mistake and learn from the mistake. Whiteboards are the best way to simultaneously assess and reteach. Lastly, I just want to say, please subscribe to this channel and remember, together we make a family of educators.